morning. Welcome to the David Rigg Show. Just turning to coffee with chopsticks. Using the vortex method, the only true way to optimize the taste of your coffee at the molecular level. <sighs> Stirring the coffee with chopsticks using the vortex method, the only true way to optimize the taste of your coffee at the molecular level. Good morning. Welcome to the Daybreak Show. I am the Sultan. We'll get started, but first, coffee. Mm. Legends of Tabletop Legendary Brew. About 50% mixed with the Ethiopian. What a perfect combo. Perfect. Not unlike many things in my life, I will eventually get tired of it and try something else. But it does change the game when you roast your own coffee. It's kind of hard to go back to anything else or when you buy beans, buying beans that you know were roasted recently. There is such a difference. The big brands, as far as I'm concerned, it's a coffee-like substance. Mm. Wow, what a great way to start the day. Good morning. I don't think bravery was something that men even thought of, the men of Apollo, Apollo 11. They were doing their job and it gave them joy, although they were more stoic than anything else. Astronauts were not social media stars. They were not superheroes. These men were scientists. The 50-year-old footage of Apollo 11 looked like it was shot yesterday. I give the movie a 10 out of 10 in a world of, and not putting down Michael Bay, in the world of Transformers and CGI and just stuff happening every second in a film. Watching the slow boil of Apollo 11 was nothing less than amazing. 10 out of 10, go see it if you get a chance to. Tremendous movie. Tremendous. Legal immigrants make America greater. Legal as in having some skin in the game. Legal as in here to contribute and not take. That's what I call sensible immigration. If we say our government owes us health insurance and politicians leverage this fake right then think what other rights that they can force on you. Three quarters of Republican lawmakers are really Democrat. I made mental notes during the last presidential campaign. Trump kicked both of their asses, Republican and Democrat, and he only settled on Republican. He is not a Republican. He's an independent. Do not kid yourself. That is why I'm independent. I'm not going to be owned by any party. He could have imploded the Re Republican Party, and this is why they have snuggled up to him. He is not a Republican. So you Democrats, don't demonize Trump. He's independent. He's an independent thinking man who could have gone in either direction. That's my two cents on it. Growing up in upstate New York, the winters were so much more than they are now, and the news uh, never talked about the weather like it does today. Part of the feminization of men, the pussification of men, I believe. Weather is not a challenge. It just is. When I look at male 
news broadcasters talking about weather. It's as if there's an apocalypse on its way. No wonder women consider themselves lucky if they find a real man. Knock, knock. Who's there? Stress, political arguments, and drama? Sorry, nobody home. Go away. Tom Scholz could compose music about breakups in life without coming across as angry. In an age of stadium rock, here comes this studio band that had no eccentric front men or major superstars. They seem to have been created by an introvert that eventually came out of his shell. The band Boston. Barry Gibb, talking about the first time he did a vocal part in the classic Bee Gees falsetto voice. The fans went wild after decades of standard singing style. He risked and completely reinvented their sound and their second career started with a song called Nights on Broadway. Look at all their music prior to that. Completely different vibe. When he started singing in that real high falsetto, all of a sudden, it was, it was a secret sauce. It was a spice that didn't exist anywhere else. Uh, maybe in a couple other places that were prominent. Frankie Valley used to do that. Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons. And Barry Gibb took a pop group, which was pop and folk, and turned it into a completely new genre. Brilliant man. Study the work of Barry Gibb. Are you hot in the summer with your beard? No, I'm hot all year round. I used to have a monstrous crush on 1930s actress Elsa Lanchester. Pun intended. Some of you will get that. The bald eagle is bigger and greater than any donkey or elephant. And don't you forget that? When I interview people, I like to think it's more of a dialogue. If it's not, then it's more of a friendly interrogation. That's why I like to say dialogue. I dislike talking about the past, and my interview style is let's talk about the future and your plans, your ideas, and your direction. I'm not a gotcha interviewer. I like dialogue, man to man, man to woman. And let's read a letter. To the father I never had. Hi, George. Thank you for responding and reading my letter on your show. I want to talk about my dating. I'm 38. I had my first real girlfriend uh, at 33. She was hot, but also separated from her husband who used to visit on the weekends while I was dating her until he left the country and never came back. I know <clears throat> that was wrong. You never talked about that, that issue on the show before. I was helpless and I needed uh, her love and touch. Uh, she used to push me away and not want to cuddle at night, but it's over. Thank God. I used to look for a good Christian woman. I totally agree with you on Christian women. I don't want to date someone who needs to ask the Lord if she can see me on a second date or not or wake up one day with a calling to serve the Lord in God knows where. I've been dating a girl now for four months. Great values. We both share views on life, politics, religion. Only thing, she's a bit overweight. When she changes, I avoid looking at her tummy. Okay, so when she takes her clothes off, you avoid looking at her. Uh, I know you will tell it like it is. Stay with this great girl or get her to lose weight and move on. Thank you. Hanny. Uh, this is a uh, Egyptian man. Let me put it this way, Hanny. If I'm the father, you never had that means you're going to listen to me. If you really like this person, if you love her, fantastic. Then it doesn't matter how she looks because beauty truly is in the eye of the beholder. It doesn't matter what 
society's standards are. Everyone has tastes. Everybody has tastes that are unique to them. A woman doesn't have to fit the uh, fit the mold of what the contemporary female is. If you think it's attractive, beautiful. Men shouldn't have to fit into a mold, although men need to be men. Women need to be feminine, let me put it that way. Men need to be masculine. In different eras, in different times, that was expressed through different means. I've had questions about long hair in women and long hair in men. It can look good on both. I think long hair looks great on women, it's feminine. On men, it looks good on some, it looks stupid on some. Now, fat. Fat doesn't look good on anybody. And if something bothers you now in a relationship, if you ever got into a more committed scenario with the person, the things that you question now, for instance, if you don't like the way somebody chews their food, like you like everything about them, and this is almost like Seinfeld kind of stuff, if you don't like the way somebody chews their food now, believe me, when you are in a committed relationship or a marriage with them, the sound of them chewing their food will be like a torture to you, and you will feel trapped. And something as simple as the way they chew their food will drive you completely crazy and cause you to start wandering and despise that person. So. First thing, don't ever think a commitment, you're too young. No, no commitment at this point, because modern women, I don't believe, know how to commit. I really don't believe that. They say they do, I don't believe they do. Women reserve the right to pack up and go at any time. I've talked about this before. When a woman leaves a man, uh, let me put it this way, when a man leaves a woman, just ups and leaves, He's despicable, he's disgusting, what a dog he is. You know how men are, men are dogs. When a woman leaves a man, people applaud. She's brave, she's brave for taking that step. There's different standards here. You need to play in that game, the game as it is, not the game how you wish it would be. That being said, if you think someone's attractive, go for it. Don't give a hoot about what other people say. But if something bothers you now, it's gonna destroy you. I suggest you watch the movie War of the Roses with uh, Michael Douglas and Kathleen Turner. Two people who got married, who were crazy about each other, who eventually, the littlest things, the littlest things, drove them to the point of insanity and some pretty bad chaotic situations and I won't spoil the film for you. That's a good film for everybody to watch. I, th I forget when it came out, many, many, many years ago, over 20 years ago, War of the Roses. And with that, finish your coffee. 2019 is the year that you get unstuck. It's the year that you stop living by your emotions. It's the year that you pursue your goals and not others' expectations for you. It's the year that you unhook a relationship that is not doing you any good. You need to offer a healthy you to someone else that way, they're not part of your life. They are not your mission. If you keep saying, I don't know what I would do without her, guess what? If she's gone, you won't know what to do without her. That door swings in both directions for both genders. You need to be whole and complete on your own. I know the movie Jerry Maguire did this whole, you complete me thing. Nobody is to complete you. Listen to me. 
Nobody is to complete you. People complement our lives, but they don't complete our lives. You complete you. Finish your coffee.